David 3D Scanner Tutorial 2 Setup One of the great advantages of the scanner's modular setup is that it can be adjusted to very different object sizes. In this tutorial we will show you how to set up and optimize your scanner for the object size that you want to scan. At this point we assume you have prepared the scanner as shown in the previous tutorial 1. Your projector is projecting a pattern and the David software shows the live camera image. We will now adjust positions, focus and brightness. This should always be done in the following order. The camera is usually mounted at the left side of the projector. For objects larger than around 350mm however, the camera should be placed at the right side of the projector to allow a larger base length. The camera angle should be set to around 20 to 25 degrees. The optimal setup and working distance depend on the size of the object or object region that you want to scan. First, place the object and the scanner in front of each other so that the projected pattern covers the region or object that you want to scan. The next step is to adjust the projector's focus such that the pattern is well focused on the object. Please concentrate on the horizontal and vertical lines at the center. Don't worry if your object has some depth and it therefore is not possible to focus all areas at the same time. This is not a problem, a slightly unfocused projection will not reduce the scan quality. Let's take a short look at the David software. The projector brightness setting should always be set to maximum. Exposure of the camera should be set to 1 60th of a second to avoid flickering. The projector is now set, so let's look at the camera image. Move the slider sideways so that the camera can see the same region that is illuminated by the projector. Of course the camera must be focused on the scanned object. If you find this difficult because the focus style does not seem to change very much, simply increase the aperture size to get a very bright image. Now the focus dial has a much larger effect and finding the right focus is easier. By the way, you can also zoom into the camera image to better evaluate the focus setting. Click on an important region with your right mouse button, then use the mouse wheel to zoom. When you have reached a good focus setting, click the live button to zoom back. This last step is very important for a good scan result. The image brightness must be set so that the camera is neither undersaturated nor oversaturated. As you see, David measures the image intensity and shows it as red curves over the camera image. Operate the aperture dial and watch the red intensity curves move up and down. Regard only those image areas that show the sine wave patterns like here and do not regard these areas. Set the aperture so that the sine wave is not too low but never oversaturated. Here, for example, the image is too bright. The red sine curve is cut off at the blue border. This would cause waves in the scan. Now it's better, but it's still too bright over here, so we will have to turn it down a little more. Now there are no more distortions, so this is perfect. This would be an ideal setting. The sine waves have a good amplitude, but they are nowhere cut off. That's it, your scanner is now set up for the object at hand. It is optimized for the given object brightness, working distance and scan area size. Please fix all screws and keep projector camera and their focus settings unchanged from now on. This was the most complicated part. Calibration and scanning is now easy as we will show you in the following tutorial.